Recently, I stumbled over the keyboard of Work Louder and uh, it looks pretty interesting to me. They built a quite cheap new keyboard. Let me show you. It looks pretty interesting, right? So it has these nice black screws here. It has a rotary encoder. It has nice keycaps. So everything here looks pretty awesome and the price is really, really nice, right? But my problem with that is I really enjoy split keyboards and I'm typing quite a lot. I type every day and that's why I really love split keyboards. I built a lot of them. My first split keyboard was the Korn. This is still one of the most famous videos on my channel. Um, I don't use it anymore because I built my own custom ones that work way better for my hands and my feelings and my typing basically. So I built quite a few iterations the latest iteration was this low free corporation. So it has low free switches. It has these low free um, keycaps. I think it looks pretty amazing. It has a little display, big battery. I also built this one, the avocado keyboard because it has a little avocado on the back. Um, it has the capability of having a track point like this Lenovo track point. If you didn't see it, check out the video for that. Um, so I built that, I put it in there. It worked really good. Um, I could move the cursor with that around. Yeah, pretty nice. But the issue was I don't use it. I really don't use the track point and it took so much battery. It drained so much the battery. So I removed it um, when now I'm stuck with this keyboard and it is really amazing, but I want to make it even better and that's design wise, right? So I want to have a similar design as the um, work louder keyboard because I really enjoy the design. So I tried to build it a bit around that and let me show you what I came up with. Uh, it's not perfect yet, but it's a work in progress, right? So as work louder is work in progress. I have nothing to do with them, but I like the idea what they build, how they build it and how they yeah, support the community, bring stuff into the community of custom mechanical keyboards. But as I said, I need it wireless and I need it split. I usually do KiCad, right? So ErgoGen that co creates it in KiCad. And here you can see the KiCad file or the KiCad stuff that come out of it. Um, I already drew all the connections here. And this time, as you see here, this is not the nice nano but this time i want to make it a bit different and using the seed studio just because it's smaller um, it has exactly the amount of gpios so this time i want to build it around that one also it's smaller and allows me to put in at the space here here you can see it um, the rotary encoder so we have the rotary encoder we have the seed studio and the rest is pretty much the same except that i have big holes and the edges to um, yeah, mimic the look of the work louder keyboard. And then I came up with the design for that. Um, it looks is similar, but not the same, right? So here you can see it, it has some similar ideas. It has these uh, corners. It's not as thick as I see it, but I mean, that's something that after assembling, you can print a new one and make it bigger. So that's just like the um, the part below, right? And the PCB here. So if I remove the PCB, you can see how it will look like. And um, what I need to design as well is like a little cap for the seat studio. But that I didn't design yet. And then I designed the knob, right? So I printed and designed a few iterations on that, um, that it looks pretty similar to the work louder one. Um, let's see if it is good, any good. So I printed a few versions. First iteration was I tried to hide the whole um, the whole rotary encoder and put it above the whole thing, but that went out way too big, right? So there's like a really big one. And then I made it smaller, so it's just sitting on top. Um, this one is with the fuzzy skin, so I also printed a few iterations and the orientation and stuff. Um, yeah, let's see how it will turn out in the end with the whole keyboard. Anyway, uh, enough with the talking. I hope this will be an interesting build. Um, I This time I also using the perp switches. They are even lighter. So they have uh, 20 grams, I think 20 grams of uh, force compared to the Red Pro Red that I use usually. And I go lighter and lighter every time. So I started with like the blue clicky switches and now I'm on the perps that are nearly the lightest uh, shock switches that exist. I think there's like one lighter one that's 
uh, 15 or something or well, this is 25 and there's a 21 anyway though enough from that um, this is like a pretty light switch let's see how it types um, and I also started to print my own keycaps so let me show you these are custom printed keycaps on my um, Creality printer and I also got a few keycaps from 3d keycap I also showed them in the last video uh, they sent me a pack of keycaps for this build. As I said, I don't use a trackpad. That's why I want to have the rotary encoder, especially for volume. Let's see how it will turn out. Enough talking. I hope you see a time lapse of the build somewhere here and uh, we will see us when I am finished with the build. If you have any questions how to custom build keyboards, happy to answer them and also happy to build or create like an in-depth video how to create custom keyboards. So after building for one day, I'm now in the state of being lost. So uh, I made a few errors. Uh, first of all, it looks pretty amazing. Let me show you. So that's the final result. Um, it looks exactly like I imagined. I have this rotary encoder that looks really nice. The keycaps, so big shout out to 3D keycaps. They look really, really good. You can download the keycaps and print them yourself. So that's what actually what I did. Um, so I printed them myself and uh, the quality comparison is quite big. So I, if you do it with a filament printer, like in PLA or PETG, as I did, uh, it looks definitely way worse than uh, the ones from 3D keycaps because they printed with SLA. They feel really good and what I really enjoy is that they are slightly shine through so you see a bit of the purple key uh, switches and the typing of, on the purple switches is amazing. But unfortunately I did two mistakes and both are related to the encoder. Or well, basically it's one mistake and one problem. <laughs> So the encoder is not working. I did a mistake on the wiring of the encoder. So here you can see it's D3 and D6 and we have D3 and D6 already. And that's actually this one, this switch. So D3 and D6 is this switch. If you press on the rotary encoder, it will trigger the same as this switch. For that, I found a pretty simple fix. What I did is just remove this diode here and solder this D6 connection down to D7 where it should be. And then it is working. Let me show you in reality. Here you can see it. So I just took a Zena diode, one of these here. You can see them here, yes. And I just soldered it here on. That's the output of the encoder. And I soldered down to D7 to the same grid and then it works fine. So that was a pretty simple fix. I fixed it also in the configuration. So if you build it yourself, you should not have the same problem. Um, but the other thing is that I cannot figure out how to configure the rotary encoder. I did everything as documented. Big shout out to the ZMK Discord because they supported me and found the bug of my code. It was just a configuration issue. So now uh, both rotary encoders work just fine. So I can rotate them and uh, they directly send the input. So all good. Thanks a lot again. Big shout out to them. Uh, great support. If you have any issues with any ZMK stuff, just go to the Discord and uh, they will support you as much as they can. Thanks again. Big shout out to 3D keycaps for providing me that. I will also link it down in the description um, because they just feel really, really good to type on. I really enjoy the look of this keyboard because you cannot see the battery. It's below here, uh, on here. I really enjoy the look of it. It basically is what I hoped it would be. Without further ado, I wish you a great rest of the weekend. Great rest of the week, wherever you are. Um, thank you for watching. Have a great day and uh, see you next time.